do we have a dude out of the new dudes on campus? And Mike Boynton, maybe, just maybe, we were wrong. You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. We are available on all of your podcasting platforms as well as visually on YouTube. You can find me personally on Twitter at all day o state. And today we're brought to you by Bird Dogs, which is uh, obviously the bee's knees and all of clothing right now. So today we get to take a gander at the new guys who've come on campus to get ready for their body by glass initiation. Obviously, Rob Glass is the highest paid strength and conditioning coach in the United States of America for college football, as he should be. And these young men are going to get the opportunity to test that out now to see if they could potentially carve out a role. Now, we have talked quite a bit about the freshmen that already showed up on campus that already were here early to do all of the spring stuff. And we know that a couple of those guys definitely did stand out. One being obviously Jack and Dean, the offensive tackle that may potentially push for some time this season. But more so than just the freshmen that were already here, one of the things that gets lost in the shuffle with these kids who come a little bit later on is kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing, right? We get so pumped up and so jacked up with the players that we have now that we have already seen in spring, right? They already have a decent amount of development underneath their their belt, per se, right? Well, these young men do not. But, so let's start off, right? we got to have a refresher. Remember who's coming in here. We'll we'll start off with Tyke Andrews. Uh, Tyke Andrews, obviously, the 6'1", 185-pound wide receiver out of Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, I will tag the video of Rashawn Woods appearing on the show. Um, uh, Yeah, he he had a lot of good things to say about Tyke. So it's better to probably hear it from him, right, since he played the position of wide receiver, coached the position of wide receiver, and got to see this young man develop, right? He is very impressive. So his development, I do think I, I do think that he has the luxury of watching guys like Brennan Presley and watching guys like Arlen Bruce do their thing in the interim. So regardless of what position, right, we fancy him to being at Oklahoma State, I do think the future is bright with him. I think he's a kid that will definitely develop and develop into something that will provide not only substance, but a little bit of a star power, right? Uh, Maybe a Josh Stewart type is kind of where I'm seeing here. All right, you have Ike Esunwun, and we've uh, we've covered him in previous videos, six foot two, 215 pounds out of Menor, Texas. He hits like a Mack truck, and we we talk all the time, everybody does in football, about having a nose for the ball, always showing up at the right time, the right place to make the right kind of tackle. Well, it's not luck, right? Sometimes luck does happen, but a lot of it is angles. And sometimes you can take an angle without visually looking at what's happening. I, if you see a defensive alignment or an offensive alignment, and you've done enough film study to know that 99% of the time they do this in this, you don't always have to be tracking the ball to go to a spot to know where likely it's going to go, right? I guess the moon is somebody that that completes that. Now, is he going to be completely out of position? Probably not, especially, again, when we take into consideration what we're looking at with this new stand-up 3-3-5, right, which is, again, an iteration of the base 4-2-5. He's going to be a good fit, all right? And then we'll go to Jadon Foreman. Jadon Foreman is somebody that everybody has been waiting on to get to uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, been living right down the street, Dell City, Oklahoma. Shout out to Badlands Boxing Academy in Lawton. Uh, pretty, pretty close proximity. I have some uh, affinity with from back home. But uh, yeah, Mr. Foreman, when you uh, consider that we just had Will Smith decommit, right? And then you look at somebody like Jadon Foreman, it puts your mind at ease. I don't think he's maybe quite on the Deshaun Brown level for me but he's pretty daggone close. 
So do we have a dude in this mix of dudes? I, I think we potentially do. We'll keep going. Cam Franklin, uh, everybody kind of know his story. 6'2", 190 pound, going to play defensive back for us. But there's a multitude of things right now in high school. Very highly rated guy. We're, re we're really, really blessed to get him, especially in the position that he's going to be playing for Oklahoma State, whether it be the safety we could potentially flex him at all three safety positions. He could potentially beef up a little bit more because his, his stature right now could uh, definitely blow up a little bit. So he has uh, maneuverability and it's something we covet, right? Somebody else that I think is going to have the same type of maneuverability. We've talked about how Cameron Epps is, is a name that everybody needs to watch out for playing corner right now for Oklahoma State University. Cameron Hurd is going to be in the same mold. Coming to Oklahoma State to play wide receiver, but he's, a, he's an athlete. He's a quarterback. He has the cerebral mentality of how to manipulate areas on the field, right? He understands things at a different level, which is exactly why Cam Epps is ascending as, as quickly as he is because he sees the game from a little bit of a different perspective. Cameron Hurd does the same thing, offers the same thing with comparable speed, if and not more. So he's going to be a threat. Is he going to be a threat and a weapon immediately? But no, maybe not. But just like the, the situation with Tyke Andrews, we're in a pretty good spot right now at the wide receiver position. We're not super, super deep, but we've got a lot of talent. And that talent is going to show out on the field, of course, but it's also going to be able to help guys like this get prepared and get ready to rock and roll much, much more quickly than I think, uh, you know, you, you think of most freshmen, right? Well, we, we've got to continue to rock and roll here, uh, but I would be remiss if I did not slide in here real quick and give everybody the rundown on Bird Dogs. We've talked about it before. i got the Bird Dog box behind me, not just because it's orange and black. I mean, of course, that helps. Good job, marketing. We talked about marketing in the, in the video uh, we dropped a little bit earlier about the SEC. Marketing is important, and Bird Dogs is the bee's knees for a reason. There's not a lot of things in life that you can use that make you look good that's also extremely comfortable. The, their stretch khaki pants are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the legs, giving you like, you know, the legitimately sculptor look. And if you're like me, comfort is of utmost importance on a daily basis. They fit way better than any regular shirt you're going to find. And they, they fixed issues by inventing this cloud knit fabric and, and the, the, the khaki type of stretch material it gives that, that fit that everybody is looking for nowadays, and you don't have to sacrifice any mobility, hostility, or movement involved. They use the uh, anti-stink -stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool, dry, and uh, significantly less stinky over time. Like I say, you can wash them, and then you can swim in them, work in them, walk in them, fight in them. It really doesn't matter. They're the best things that I've purchased or, or been associated with when it comes to comfort and a good look at the same time. I've, I've told you all before, I love my golf shorts. That's my cup of tea. It doesn't really matter what temperature is outside. I like to have shorts on. I'll go with a hoodie, right? I'm not scared to throw a hoodie and, and, and Carhartt on every now and again, but I like to be in shorts. So now that uh, I get to ride in style and it doesn't have to be something that's, you know, basketball oriented, I can look good, feel good, the whole nine yards. I'm happy about it. So, Go to birddogs.com slash locked on. Enter the promo code locked on college, all one word, for the free Yeti style tumbler that will come with your order. Again, that is birddogs.com slash locked on for the free Yeti style tumbler that you're going to win whenever you do uh, get yourself rocking and rolling in the bee's knees in bird dogs. So the problem is when you buy them and you put them on, you kind of don't want to take them off, right? That, that might be the only uh, warning label necessary. Anyways, so let's jump back in to some of the fellers that, that are going to be jumping on campus. Uh, Jared Henry, uh, we just brought him in from, you know, the, the junior college type of ranks. I think he's going to be somebody that kind of like a Tyrone Weber from last year, that even though maybe athletically he's got a little bit to work on, I do think that he's somebody that we are going to benefit from. I do think he's somebody that will actually crack into the lineup. He's somebody that's going to add instantaneous depth. And you cannot have enough depth at the offensive line spot. We've talked about before. It's one of the few times as an Oklahoma State fan in the last, I don't know, daggone darn near decade, that we can say we're legitimately two to three deep at every single spot on the O-line. So when you add somebody like this, it only does massively beneficial things for that depth. R.J. Lester, 
another multi-sport athlete that plays a little bit of everything out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, another guy, 6'1", 180, going to play that safety, going to play the, the potential Cam Epps type of uh, corner role as well. We've gone on and on and on about Ladarius Webb Jr. I think R.J. Lester is somebody that kind of fits in that Ladarius Webb Jr. mold. He doesn't mind sticking his nose in there. He'll get dirty. He'll get nasty when necessary. But again, he sees the field from a different kind of perspective because the amount of positions that he's been able to excel at and the amount of sports that he's been able to excel at. People, when we were growing up, talked about you know potentially going one sport athlete, one sport athlete. It was kind of widely accepted as an okay thing to do. Nowadays, college coaches traditionally prefer you to be a multi-sport athlete, right? That's something that Mike Gundy was ahead of his time on. Mike Gundy wanted wrestlers and football players. Mike Gundy wanted track athletes and, and football players and baseball players. And you see the, the connection nowadays with baseball and, and the quarterback position. There's a lot of sports that offer a lot of different uh, movements, right? So you develop different muscle groups and you're always working on accountability and leadership because you have to show up to multiple practices on time. It does teach a lot and it goes beyond just one specific thing. So multi-sport athletes are what we look for. It's what a lot of places look for. The old age adage of focus on one thing at too early of an age is it's not good. And RJ Lester fits that rope mold. So another person that I think you, you look at and you see potentially out of position to me would be Ricky Lole. He's playing defensive tackle, playing defensive end at 6'4", 307. I think you understand what the idea is here. We need somebody else in that Justin Kirkland type of role. We need somebody else in that Colin Clay type of role. And I think Ricky could provide that. And it's crazy. When you look at the tape, he out-athleted most people on tape. And so for him to be able to get this size, the frame is not an issue. The mobility is not an issue. Dexterity is not an issue. Flexibility is not an issue. Understanding assignments and what to do, again, not an issue. This kid, I think, could potentially be a definite weapon. Then we jump on to somebody like Jameson at Mejia. I apologize if I said that name wrong. I researched his name in a previous video, but this time I may have said it wrong. Anyways, another offensive lineman, adds depth, 6'5", 285, 290, out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. You love your Okies. You love getting your guys in here that you know it just means a little bit more. I can tell you, when you go to college out of state, growing up a fan, it does something different. It makes you do things differently. Right? It's not the same affinity. It's not the same affection. It's not the same passion and love. If you love something to death, you're going to do more for it. That's a fact. So if you can stay in state, and that's part of kind of what you're looking to accomplish for not only you, but you're also your family's benefits. This is a good guy to get, and it's a good person to bring into the system and add instantaneous depth. All right. So then you will go back to the offensive side of the ball. Jalen Pope, slot receiver, six foot one, 190 pounds out of Alito, Texas. When we talk about Arlen Bruce not being like a John Paul Richardson, I think Jalen Pope could potentially be like a John Paul Richardson. I think he could definitely fit that style of wide receiver, right? Again, we like our legacy. We like the guys who like to stay close. So if you can provide, we're going to look at the asset here. And I think Jalen Pope definitely is an asset. Dylan Smith, another multi-sport athlete who plays multiple positions. You understand the theme here. True cornerback, going to definitely play cornerback, 5'11", 175 pounds. Welcome to the body by glass. We expect all of that to change. So he could, he could possibly slide a little bit over. Um, but he's got connections, so this is going to mean a little bit more to him. I'm excited to see what he's going to bring to the table because, to me, the possibilities are endless. And and he's another guy who had opportunities, scholarship opportunities to go do places, to go do things at multiple places. A lot of these guys are choosing to come to Oklahoma State as, as walk-ons. That says a lot. Right, some of these guys are willing to to bet on themselves. So, we keep rolling. Another offensive lineman. We need as many o, o linemen as you can physically possibly get. And Gage uh, Stanland, and we've we've done an episode on him. He's already standing almost three hundred pounds. He's already somebody that's in the weight room on a consistent basis. You do see some of the flat footed stuff that is going to take a little bit of work, but you also see how just insanely mean he is 
Like that dude takes no prisoners. Ryan, rem- reminiscent on film a little bit, I think you could say of Justin Kirkland. He's a, he, he's a dude. Um, oh, Puoso Utu. This dude uh, plays uh, d- defensive end right now. Talk about out of position. When he gets to Oklahoma State and he's able to flourish at the linebacker position, I do think this is somebody that everybody could probably pay a little bit more attention to. Because the the 6-1-205 frame, not a problem. Playing out of position, to me, a little bit of a problem. Is there going to be a little bit of a learning curve? Yes. But there's a lot of things that stand out, especially athletically, about this kid. And it does say something. If you can put your hand in the dirt and you can dominate from the defensive end position when you're severely undersized more often than not, that says something about what you're going to be able to provide. So if you're talking about the stand-up guy, Or if you're talking about a potential replacement for an Xavier Benson, this is right up the alley. Okay, now we get to go back to the offensive side of the ball. We've done an episode about this gentleman as well. Uh, What's it? Ceci? Uh, Dag Nabbit. I know I'm going to mess this up. Um, Velahe? Velahe? I I should have researched that one again, too. My bad. I messed up. All right, y'all. Salt Lake City, Utah native. I'll try to tag uh, one of the episodes uh, with him in it. But uh, 5'11", 200 pounds. And he has connections already to Jalen Warren, same coach. Um, you know, grew up with that, that mantra in mind of go out and work for everything you, you get in life. And this is another Benny Tonga connection. This is a guy that I think is going to come in extremely motivated. And he's going to follow in a lot of the footsteps of a Jalen Warren. So when I said, is there somebody in this group that could potentially be a dude? I definitely, definitely put Sessi in this category, 100%. Now, we've talked quite a bit recently about how this new age of recruiting is going to lend itself to where there's a lot of three stars that don't really get evaluated anymore. Taiwan Ray is that guy. He's going to play safety for us. He's a hard-hidden dude. He's going to be uh, pretty reminiscent right now what we have out of Trey Rucker, Lyric Rawls, right? That, that same type of versatility, the same mindset of aggressiveness, willing to take you out all day, every day, and, and doesn't really get the love that he should have. I'm, I'm telling you, before all this NIL, before all this open transfer free agent crap, Taiwan Ray Jr., is a legit high three-star guy. The film doesn't lie. Go watch the film. And it's not like Georgia is not a place that produces some big-time athletes. So if you can go to SEC country and you can take somebody that should be a high three-star caliber guy, this is a potential dude. Absolutely all day, every day. Him being underrated is going to be massively beneficial for us. I cannot wait to see his development. I do think that out of this group, of everybody we've listed so far, I think he might be one of the first to to, to break out. Uh, then you got to go again. We've talked about legacies. We love our legacies. We love Kate Cabness doing it in a cowboy baseball uniform. And we're also going to love what Kaysen Cabness brings to the table. A wide receiver who's going to be kind of like his uh, his brother that's on the roster right now. And Kale from Norman, that always feels good. Legacy stuff, that always feels good. We know what kind of work ethic he has. He's actually a pretty good route runner, right? He's he's fairly polished. I think that the problem they had in Norman was offensive creativity, maybe lack of ability to get him the ball successfully. So just like his his brother, his brother, you know, popped up and saved the game for us a couple years ago against Boise State. Last year, had some catches, played in some games, did some things. I think Kaysen could potentially creep up into that category as well. Jump on down to another legacy. Everybody knows uh, Justin Crutchmer's brother, Kyle, wrestled at Oklahoma State University. He's making a very good name for himself right now in the MMA game. He's going to continue his ascension. So that's a name to watch out for. And if you're an MMA, UFC type of fan, watch out for Kyle Crutchmer. But same can be said for his brother, another bad A mama jamma on a wrestling mat that you do not want to tangle with. If you're talking about getting in a, a battle with somebody, this dude's not the guy. So if if you're thinking in your head that Justin Wright is the Dan Campbell, chew your kneecaps off, dive, fill gaps type of linebacker, that he is, 
then so is Justin Crutchmer. He can be exactly the same type of guy, six foot, 188 pounds, 190 pounds. We know he's going to get to 200, probably no issue whatsoever. We know he's probably going to be able to maintain his athleticism. So even if it's not in a complete linebacker role, I do expect Justin Crutchmer to be able to compete at some point in time, even if it's uh, special teams. It is what it is. Oh, man. Uh, we'll go on to Hudson Davis, running back. Um, he's a, another Okie that carved out a little bit of an opportunity here. So we'll see what he, he's able to provide. I don't do a, didn't do a lot of research on him. Don't know a lot about him. So I can't sit here and pretend that I do. So I won't. So we'll move on. Another one, one that I don't know a lot about is going to be uh, Garrett Keith, offensive lineman. Now 6'4", 290. And being an Okie, it does matter more. It could come into play here. Uh, Cooper Lay, another legacy out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's related. And brothers of Cade Cabinus and Kaysen Cabinus. How ironic is that? So we get basically two brothers together on this recruiting class, both Okies. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun to watch his development as well. Another multi-sport guy, multiple position type of guy that could bulk up, that could emerge out of this body by glass as a little bit of a different athlete. Uh, Grant Maribel, linebacker, 6'2", 240, Argyle, Argyle Texas, We'll see. Caleb Levy, I think, is kind of what comes to mind to me there to some degree. Um, he, he's going to have to put in the work. He's going to have to do some stuff. But I see some potential here. Everybody here is going to get excited about Mr. Gabe Rodriguez. Malcolm Rodriguez's brother, of course. We love our legacies. This, this to me, means the world. We've, we've talked, or I've talked, I'm sorry, about having uh, people like Ryland McCorders on the roster and Elijah Wright on the roster. It's just that, that, that source of nostalgia to some degree. It's worth its weight in gold all day, every day. Sign me up. I'm all for it. If, he, if he's anything like his brother and he has the same wrestling pedigree, he has the same athletic style of pedigree, we've seen you know, physiology, physiologically what uh, this family is, is capable of. And I don't think anybody should sleep on Gabe here. Uh, got another offensive lineman. We talk about depth. We love depth out of Alma, Oklahoma. Sean Rich, 6'6", 290. We'll see what pans out. Uh, you got uh, Jude, I don't know if it's Rop, Rope. It's got to be Rop, probably, based on the spelling, from Stillwater, Oklahoma. He did help uh, Stillwater High School just win a gold ball. That's got to that's gotta mean something. It's got to matter to some degree. And then a pretty good surprise here out of Jinx, Oklahoma, six foot 180 wide receiver, Ty Walls. Congratulations, sir, on making this whole thing happen for yourself. Put yourself in a position to make some stuff happen. And he gets to rock Jaden Bray's old number and number 85. So that's kind of cool as well. So now we get to jump on a little bit more towards, you know, the landscape of basketball. And you know, I got to maybe eat some crow here. I thought that the amount of transfers was absolutely going to be a problem. I thought that losing Musa Cisse was going to be a problem, not so much just because we lose somebody that talented, but because maybe if you get a seven foot, you know, massive recruit blue chip type of guy and then he leaves i thought maybe that would hinder our ability to get those caliber guys again but i was wrong and i don't mind admitting when i am wrong because it's not the first time i've been wrong right i was wrong once before back in 97 so here we are again it's it happens when you talk about somebody like isaiah miranda we're pretty uh Pretty blessed, I think, to have Coach Mike Boynton. Right, we all know that he's a recruiter, had the number nine class in America. We lost more people than we thought we were going to lose. Losing Caleb Boone hurt. Losing Musa Cisse hurt. Uh, losing Avery Anderson hurt, right? Losing Woody Newton to some degree as a rotational piece could potentially hurt. Losing Chris Harris could potentially hurt, right? There's a lot of things that happen that were negative there for a good chunk of time. And uh, we all dogpiled on top of Boynton and even me to some degree uh, about how many people were losing and how little we heard about the people we were bringing in. Now, we know about the, the recruiting class as far as, you know, the high school kids coming up, but the transfer market seemed like it was going to be a net loss for us. And now you look at, again, Isaiah Miranda to complement the number nine recruiting class in America that was already... In the fold, seven foot one, 201 pounds, got a like seven foot four wingspan. 
He's Musa Cisse with a really good stroke. Now, he's going to have to put on some bulk here. 201 pounds sounds good, but when you're seven foot one, it, it hits a little bit different. Maybe he should, uh, you know, participate in the body by glass system. Um, anyways, the nutrition guys and everybody strength and conditioning, they'll have him scored away. But if he puts on some bulk, the fact that this kid can shoot all over the court, it's going to be a problem for the opposition. And we've talked about the number nine recruiting class in the country, right? Brandon Garrison made a phenomenal account for himself in the all American McDonald's all American game shot hundred percent from the floor. Good for him. That was amazing to watch. It was good nationally uh, for people to see what we have coming to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, another highly rated guy, obviously is Eric Daly, Daly Jr. His decision, you know, was basically between NBA and Oklahoma state. We are very, very, very blessed that he did in fact choose to come to Oklahoma state university. He should instantaneously help our shooting woes, uh, at least to some degree. And then Jamron Keller, He's a good Byron Eton type of guy, maybe even an ice likely type of guy. He's going to add a lot to the mix. He's going to add a lot to preparation. I think it'll take him a couple of years before he really finds his, his stride. Unlike Justin McBride, Justin McBride is the sleeper right now of this class uh, because, you know, he went through an injury. He gained some weight. He lost some confidence. He had to get it back. He was able to go back to, you know, the four star type, type of classification. But this kid was a five star at one point in time for a reason. And I do think that somebody like Mike Boynton could potentially get that out of him. And he can shoot the ball pretty daggone well as well. Another shooter is going to be Connor Dow. Connor Dow being from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, already standing at 6'5", 6'6". But he's got a really good stroke, really good shot, three-star guy, had opportunities to go other places, chose to, to kind of stay home, right? We, we know how big of a deal that is to us. And then you do have to factor in the transfers. Javon Small, we started off really good. Getting him from East Carolina was a bit, was a pretty big get, right? Everybody was pretty daggone happy about that one. And then we tailed off a little bit. Uh, Jarius Hicklin out of North Florida, he could be an asset. I know there's a lot of people that are very high on him, uh, and including some people that we've had on this, this program. I don't know enough to know whether I'm buying all of that yet, but uh, yeah. Uh, very well, maybe. And then getting a big man in Mike Marsh out of Jacksonville. Production, yeah, sure. Maybe it, it left a little bit to be desired, but the development was there. You you saw what he was able to do. He's good about using his body. He's good about understanding angles. He's got decent hands, and I do think somebody that, that, that can fill gaps for us, right? Think of a Tyreek Smith instantaneous type of situation, and now you factor in Isaiah Miranda. Isaiah Miranda is, is a baller. He's an athlete. He was another one, kind of like Eric Daly Jr. Um, he, he came out of high school early, went to NC State. It was a massive get for them. I actually read some of the, the message boards from NC State talking about getting this kid. They were very, very, very excited to get him. But, you know, he graduated early, so he enrolled early. And so he got to play with NC State like part of this, the, the second semester. Uh, but, he, you know, he didn't get any PT. And so then it was down to going back through the NBA process which everyone thought that's maybe where he was leaning. And then uh, he decided, nope, uh, I need to go back to college. I need to come to Stillwater, America. I need to play for Mike Boynton. I need to help them not only make the tournament, but go a little bit deeper than just round one because it needs to happen. It's year seven. Yes, we lost some dudes, but you clearly brought in some dudes. We're going to be young, but talent is not a problem. Athleticism is not a problem. We need to figure it out. All right, y'all. That's all we've got for this one. As always, I love y'all. God bless. Go Pokes. And thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. Later.